excessive sleep causing strokes? In a recent study, it was found that people who did excessive sleeping and excessive napping had almost double the risk of stroke compared to people who had a more normal amount of sleep and napping. In this video, I will review those findings and I will discuss if sleep is something we should worry about. Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Ekberg. I'm a holistic doctor and a former Olympic decathlete. And if you want to truly master health by understanding how the body really works, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. So first of all, what is a stroke? A stroke is when the brain loses blood supply and therefore oxygen. And there can be two mechanisms that causes blood and oxygen loss for the brain. One is called an ischemic stroke, and that's where a clot, something that's been stuck for a while, it gets loose and it starts traveling and it gets stuck in a blood vessel in the brain and it clogs the pipes, so to speak. So the pipes, the blood vessels are intact, but something clogs it and now the blood can't get through. And the portion of the brain that's beyond that clot starves to death. The other mechanism is a, called a hemorrhagic stroke, and that's when the blood vessels burst. That's when it's not a clot, but because it bursts, then the blood just sort of seeps out, it floods the area, and it can't circulate and get to the tissue and back. And again, we lose the blood supply. Strokes are very serious business. There's about 15 million cases a year worldwide. About a third of them die as a result, and about a third of them live on, but they have significant disability. And a third have more or less full recovery. So there's several reasons why people can have a greater chance of stroke. And one is if you have atherosclerotic plaques. If there's a plaque buildup, then portions of those plaques or other blood clots can get dislodged and travel up to the brain and clog the pipes. You could also have weakened blood vessels that rupture, and that is from nutritional deficiencies, from lack of vitamins, minerals, and the essential elastic protein called collagen and elastin. There are also genetic predispositions where people are born with weaker blood vessels or blood vessels that take very sharp turns that get subject to more friction. And another factor that can cause these vessels to burst is if you have excessive blood pressure. So if you have, not, we're not talking 130, 140, but we're talking 180 to 200 for long periods of time, then that causes increased friction and increased pressure and that can cause these blood vessels to burst. But if we are to kind of group all these causes together, then they're called cardiovascular disease. And the cause is all of the factors, the inflammation, the insulin, the unbalanced lipid profiles, and everything that goes together with metabolic syndrome that we've talked about in some other videos. The cause of strokes is cardiovascular disease, basically. Okay? So strokes don't happen unless you have something that's been going on for a while first. So then the question is, of course, how would sleep contribute to the development of a stroke? So let's just look at the study first. It was a Chinese cohort study. It was published by the American Academy of Neurology. And in the study, they had 31,750 people. They had an average age of 62 years. They followed them for six years. And during those six years, there were 1,557 cases of stroke, and none of these people had ever had a stroke before. So then they looked at how much do these people sleep, and they found that with the people who slept more than nine hours compared to the group who slept seven to eight hours, which we consider normal, more than nine hours we consider excessive, the excessive sleepers had 23% more strokes. And then if you combined the people 
and you looked at who had 90 minute, more than 90 minute naps, plus they slept more than nine hours every night. So they slept a lot, okay? Then these people had an 85%, almost double the incident of strokes, almost double the risk of stroke, as they said, compared to the people who slept normally, who slept seven to eight hours and had shorter naps. And finally, another factor they found was that people who reported poor sleep quality also had a higher incidence. They had a 29% higher frequency of strokes than the baseline, than the people who slept normally and reported good sleep. Now that sounds pretty convincing, right? I don't know that I would ever dare go to sleep without setting the alarm. Uh, I don't know if I ever want to sleep in again. That sounds pretty scary. And indeed, the main author of the paper, Dr. Xiaomin Zhang, said that, I quote, these results highlight the importance of moderate napping and sleeping duration and maintaining good sleep quality, especially in middle-aged and older adults. So they certainly believe what they're studying and what they're finding, that we definitely should not sleep too much. We should sleep moderately and take short naps, otherwise you could get strokes. Now in the study, they also reported some of the limitations. I mean, they agree, they understand that no study is perfect, that we can't just take everything at face value. So here are some of the limitations that they reported. They admitted that this was an observational study, meaning that they just observed different things and they had no idea whether these things actually has a causal relationship. If they observed A and B, they didn't know if A caused B or vice versa, they just observed them together. Two, they did not account for sleep apnea or other sleep disorders. These data were self-reported. These were just people telling them, they didn't have them in a laboratory measuring how much they slept. These were just people reporting how much they slept and how well they thought their sleep was. They said that even though these were very compelling findings, they said that these findings may only apply to older, healthy Chinese adults because that was the group they were studied. So they, they basically feel that it does apply to this group of people, but it may not apply to another group of people. So if you're not older, if you're not about 60 years old, if you're not Chinese, then it may not apply to you. But what really gets me here is the word healthy, all right? They believe that healthy people get strokes. They said that they studied healthy people because none of these people had had a stroke before, so they must be healthy, right? And then 1,557 people got a stroke by some random chance, from, by some bad stroke of luck, all right? Healthy people don't get strokes. If you get a heart attack or you get a stroke, you were not healthy the day before. You were symptom-free, but you were not healthy. You had been building up a disease. You had been uh, declining in health for many, many years or even decades before the first symptom happened. Okay? So this is such a distortion. This is such a distorted way of thinking that we have to get past. And then we have to start paying much, much more attention between observation and causation. So in the conclusion, they say, long sleep duration, long midday napping, and poor sleep quality were associated with higher risks of stroke, okay? associated with. So first they're saying it's associated. There's no causal relationship. But then in the same paragraph, he continues, persistently long sleep duration or switched from average to long sleep duration increased the risk of stroke. So now when they say it increases the risk, now they're stating it as a causative relationship. Okay? And this is what we do all the time. We observe associations. We see this happened and that happened 
and this happened and that happened. There's no causal relationship, but if we observe them enough and we say, hmm, I wonder if that caused that, and then we say that it increased the risk, now we have, we're creating a causative relationship without there ever being one. This is so important, this is so fundamental to understand the difference between cause and association that we're going to drill this just a little bit. You'll, you'll like this. Cause versus association. A happens and because of A then B happens. So A causes B. That's a causative relationship. With association we observe, we are an independent observer, we observe A and B this happened and that happened, but we don't know if they're related or not. There is no way for us to tell if they have any relationship other than that they exist at the same time and maybe at the same place. So let's take some examples. Let's say you're driving by in a nice neighborhood. The, all the gardens are very nicely manicured compared to another area where no one pays attention to the gardens. So you notice that in the nice gardens, they have nice roses and they have nice lawns. Does that mean that the roses cause the nice lawns? Does that mean that if you have a terrible quality lawn, if you just plant some nice roses, that all of a sudden you're going to get a nice lawn? No. It means that people who pay attention to their yards usually pay attention to both the roses and the lawns. Okay, there's no causative relationship. One of my favorite examples I mentioned before is the police is always at the site of an accident. Every time I see a traffic accident, there's the police. Does that mean the police caused the accident? No. There is no causative relationship there. All right? And in dialysis, dialysis is when people have kidney failure. When their kidneys have crashed and burned, they can no longer filter the blood and clean it. Then they have to hook them up to a machine and this machine cleans the blood for them. So they can live many, many years, even though it's a huge burden. It's very tedious, it's very time consuming, it's very expensive. But these people are fortunate enough thanks to dialysis, to get many, many years more of life. These people who are on dialysis, they have a much, much higher mortality rate. The death rate of people who are on dialysis is much, much higher than the people who are not on dialysis. Does that mean dialysis causes the mortality? No, of course not. Okay? These people are sick that's why they have a greater tendency of dying. If they stop the dialysis, they wouldn't live a week. All right? So we have to un start understanding how absurd it is to observe different things without any reason for why they should be related and all of a sudden start putting it together. And we have to use some common sense and understand nature and physiology a little bit to make sense of these things. So here's how it really works. Here is why sleep is associated with strokes, but not the cause. Okay? If anyone had just asked this question, is it possible that sick people sleep more? Yes. You could ask a five-year-old. They understand. Yeah, if you're sick, you're going to sleep. Tired old people, they sleep more. Why? Because they have low energy. When they have low energy, they don't have so much energy to do their daily things. Their bodies are trying to heal. They can't generate energy, so they sleep more. And sick people have poor health. They have less function. They have less ability to generate energy. So is it possible that sick people have more strokes? Of course, cardiovascular disease is the reason for stroke. People who have cardiovascular disease have less health. They have poor health, so therefore they have more strokes. So if we just complete this very, very basic, almost childish line of reasoning, then 
if it's possible that sick people sleep more and sick people have more strokes, then that's the association that people who sleep more have more strokes, but sleep is not the cause of the stroke. Sleeping is a natural mechanism. It's absurd to think that seven to eight hours, suppose there was something harmful about lying down, maybe the blood was pooling, maybe we had some compression, and we'd be totally fine for seven to eight hours lying down, but somewhere around nine hours, there's a critical marker. Now all hell breaks loose and we get really, really sick. That's absurd, all right? We have to start understanding the body and what is the cause and what's simply association. So to finish up the study, Dr. Zhang says, more research is needed to understand how taking long naps and sleeping longer hours at night may be tied to an increased risk of strokes. Here's the kicker. But previous studies have shown that long nappers and sleepers have unfavorable changes in their cholesterol levels and increased waist circumference, both of which are risk factors for stroke. So he's talking about metabolic syndrome. And the answer is staring him right in the face. He notices that people who sleep more have metabolic syndrome, but he gets, gets it backwards again. He doesn't understand that the people with metabolic syndrome have less health, they have less energy, that's why they sleep more, all right? If they only could see the true causes, the origins of disease, they would have this figured out in a heartbeat. But the whole problem is that we have a sick care system. We are so entirely, 100% focused on symptoms. We don't understand health. That maybe if we called it a sick care system, if we understood that there's a sick care system and a health care system, and the hospitals, they're part of the sick care system. The health care system, that's the gym, that's the health counselors, that's the chiropractors and the yoga instructors and the naturopaths. And it's not that one is good or bad, both are necessary, but one is for sick care, emergency intervention, and the other is for health care. It's about promoting the function, building the function of the body, asking what does it take for a normal body to work to not get sick? But because they don't ask those questions, because these are very, very intelligent people. They spend years and years and years. They are doctors and PhDs, but they get tunnel vision because they're in the sick care system. They study disease and pathology and symptoms, and therefore they can't see the forest for the trees. If you find that you sleep more than nine hours and you take really long naps, then that may not be an ideal situation, but don't worry about the sleep. Worry about the reason that you may be sleeping that much. People can sleep excessively for many reasons. Maybe they're sick, maybe they're uh, recovering from an infection, maybe they have some underlying thing, maybe they don't generate enough energy, maybe there's a metabolic problem, maybe there's some depression or anxiety at the bottom. Those people tend to sleep more. So yeah, it may not indicate an ideal situation if you sleep excessively, but the sleep is not the problem. The thing that makes you sleep excessively might be the problem. So learn as much as you can about health, about how to maintain and increase health, and then you'll have less of the problems. Now, all of this talking made me really tired, so I'm gonna go take a long nap, and I'm not gonna set the alarm. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you check out that one. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.